finding the shorter side. So, so far with Pythagoras' theorem, we've learned how to find the hypotenuse, but we can also use it to find one of the other shorter sides. Let's just recall that in a right angle triangle, our hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. And this time we're interested in one of these shorter sides. We can find any one of them, because we know if this one's A, and this one's B and this one's C, we know that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. But if we wanted to find A or B, we can rearrange our equation. If we minus B squared from both sides, for example, B squared minus B squared will go, and we're left with C squared minus B squared equals A squared. And it's important to know that when you're finding a shorter side, it's the hypotenuse squared minus the other shorter side squared. So let's use that in an example. So if we have a right angle triangle where we know the hypotenuse is 5 and one of the other shorter sides is 4, what's the value of this other shorter side which we'll call x? Well, using what we just looked at above, we know that x squared equals the hypotenuse squared minus the other shorter side squared. So x squared equals 5 squared, which is 5 times 5, which is 25, minus 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, which is 16. So x squared equals 25 minus 16, which is 9. And we can't forget to square root because we want to find x, not x squared. So we'll square root both sides of this equation. So the square cancels out with the square root because they're opposites. And the square root of 9 is 3. And we've successfully found the shorter side. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at another right angle triangle. Because remember, Pythagoras' theorem only works in right angle triangles, where we know this side is 5 metres, and the hypotenuse is 10 metres, and we wanted to find let's say, x, this unknown side here. So using Pythagoras' theorem for a shorter side, or well, x is a shorter side, so the shorter side squared equals the hypotenuse squared minus the other shorter side squared. So x squared equals 10 squared, which is 100, minus 5 squared, which is 25. So x squared is going to equal 100 minus 25, which is 75, and now we can square root both sides, so we can just find x. So x equals the square root of 75, which is not a perfect square number, which means we're going to get a decimal answer. We could leave it as root 75 as an exact answer, but if, you are, if they wanted a decimal answer, we could put in the calculator, and we get 8.7, meters to one decimal place.